Hi everyone and welcome back to our action RPG series. In the last episode we worked on the buff system and now we need to show it visually on the screen via some UI. So in this episode we're going to create the user interface to showcase our buffs in a buff tray in the HUD. So let's jump in. So with the buff we are going to have something called a buff and a buff tray widget. So let's go into our user interface folder. And we're going to create one widget called W buff. And that's going to be the individual buff icon that you see up in the corner of the screen. And then we're going to make another one, which is going to be what I like to call the buff tray, which is the container, which is going to contain all of our buffs in the corner of the screen. And the buff tray is pretty simple. It's just going to be a wrap box. So search for wrap and put a wrap box in and we'll rename it and we'll come back to this in a minute so box buff tray and don't forget tick is variable because this will be changing the contents of it during the game so it is going to be variable okay compile and we'll close that we'll come back to that in a moment the first thing we're going to do though is go into our buffs and the buff icon we are going to simply put a size box and then inside that size box I'm going to put in a border and that border will contain the image icon for the buff okay so let's see what icons I have okay and to test this out we're going to go and get an icon I've brought in a ton of icons from some asset packs I've got. So let's find one that looks like it's going to give us more power, more strength. So let's go over and there you go. That one looks pretty good. We'll have that one. So I'm going to go into my border and assign that to the brush like so. Now the size box, we're going to override the width and height. And I'm going to do 60 by 60. Now, when you don't see it changing here, that's just because it's set to fill the screen change it to desired on screen and you'll see a better representation of what it's going to look like. Brilliant. And that's the basics of our buff, but there's a few things to be aware of when we think about future buffs. So some buffs will have a progress bar for how long they're going to last for a time or so forth. You may also get stacks where a buff can be stacked multiple times. So let's just future proof our buff here by including that information here too. So to do that, I'm going to go to my border and inside this, I'm going to put in the number for the stat count. So that'd be a text. Drag that into the border. And there it is. Now, obviously, we want it a lot smaller. So I'm going to do 10. And I usually put in like a number here so I can see what it's going to look like. The 10 I do. Uh, outline, give an outline so it stands up out from any background we're going to have. So if you've got a light background, you don't want white, so you need the black to contrast it. So it's a good idea to put an outline on text that is going to be on top of an image that that image could change a lot. And I'm going to put in the bottom left hand corner of this, I think. Like that. Cool. Next, I'm going to put in a progress bar and I'm going to put that beneath the size box here. I'm just going to put it just underneath here like that. So I'm going to look for progress. And this is going to be added onto our size box. So not as part of the size box, but on top of it or underneath it, literally. So I'm going to right click on size box in a hierarchy, wrap with a vertical box so we can do vertical stacking. I'm going to drag a progress bar into the vertical box. And there it is. And you can see what that's going to look like. If you just change the percentage, you can see a preview of that look. Now we're going to change that look because I think the default progress bar is ugly. So let's change that a bit. So I'm going to go down up, well, down, go, go up to the background image. And I can't remember if we already made the flat shade. No, we'll do a flat shade material. So let's just go into the materials for our UI. And the flat shade material is a handy one to have as it is, well, it's just not thin, it's just a flat color. It's flat white. So what you got to do is change this from surface user interface and then put in the color white. 
And that's literally all you got to do. Close that. And that will then change this from this sort of graduated shaded mess of a thing. And if I chuck it into a flat shade, we get this nice flat minimalistic look, which is uh, kind of nice. And I do the same for the fill image. Like there. And then it's just a matter of like changing the size of things. So the size of this progress bar currently is is set to its default height okay but you can override this by using another size box if you want so wrap with size box and we go to the height override and i'm going to put in a height of five and there you go okay and then it's just matter of colors so background image color we're going to change the tint of this to black and the bottom color we're going to change the fill or color and opacity and we'll do it to white okay. okay so a few things we're going to do here is we're going to make the progress bar a variable and change its name bar timer the text here can be variable change its name text stack and the border with the image in it's going to be variable and we're going to change its name icon there you go so that is our buff now we're also going to add one little thing to this and it's going to be like some default padding around the whole entire icon so to do that you go to the top of your hierarchy where it says in this case w underscore buff and then on the right hand side you'll find at the top padding i'm going to type in five so what i usually like to do now is i would go into my buff tray and just place a few in here to see how it looks so you get a sort of a, a block out look of how it's all going to work so i'm going to put in a couple of them okay and we'll make it grow from the right hand side so i'm going to change the alignment of my wrap box so I go to buff tray to be on the right alignment there we go and that's looking a lot better compile and save so now I'm going to add this to the main HUD of the game. So let's go to our player HUD. Go search for our buff tray. Bring it into our canvas panel. And there it is. So now I just want to resize it, reposition it to where I want it to be. So I'm going to put it in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to choose the anchor, shift and control. Click on it and it'll move it, align it. All for that anchor, which is nice. And I'm just going to offset it from the side a little bit by minus 15 the x and 15 the y there we go and we'll give it so it's got enough space for two rows there just in case perfect okay and there's our buff tray now in order for us to call the buff tray and tell them to add the buff icon we need to know where the buffs are being stored and how they can be registered to the ui and the place we're going to do that is going to be on the stats component because we're going to make this also work for enemies so enemies can also be buffed so on our stats component we're going to go to functions and add a add buff function and this we're going to take the input and look for a buff parent actor and we'll call it buff and all we're going to do is going to attach this actor to another actor and the actor we're attaching to is going to be the owner of the stats component so drag out from there get owner and you when you get c2 like this you want the one that's part of the component section okay this one's going to search the outer chain to find out who owns this component so do that and as i mentioned last time we're going to change these to snap to target because you may have buffs that are uh reliant on radius around the player character for example now when we've attached it we want to go to event dispatches and we want to do on buff and then we're going to call the on buff plugging in the buff that we've just received okay so it's exactly the same as what we've had before we we're attaching it to the actor but this time we are attaching it and calling this buff instead so all we have to do is call this function rather than just attaching it manually so let's go back to our buff parent. 
and here we are touching it manually we're going to get rid of this and instead we're going to get who this is owned by or yeah owned by and then call that add buff function so we're going to get the owner we then want to get the component by class and check for the stats component and then from there I can do add buff plug that in and the buff is going to be self okay so very simple but it does exactly the same thing it's just adding that event dispatcher in there too so with that done we now need to bind our UI to that dispatcher so we go into our buff tray and on the buff tray we can get rid of these now now we're happy with that we're going to go to the graph and we're going to do a binding so the event construct here in this case this we only want to see the player character so we're going to get the player character and from there we're going to get the component by class and we're going to choose the stack component and from there, we can do bind event on buff. Plug that in. Okay, and when we're doing that, we're going to drag that down, create an event, and create a matching event. And we'll call it on buff. So now it's going to come through with this buff. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, we want to spawn in, create the widget, spawn it in and add it to our buff tray so we're going to go ahead and create the widget choose the buff and then we're going to take our buff tray and add child to that box now the buff needs to know what buff it is that we're adding so we're going to go to the buff widget and in here on the graph, we're going to have a variable referring to the buff actor that we have. So buff actor. Buff. And we're going to make that editable and exposed on spawn. So now we can set it whilst we are creating this widget. So let's just do that. Refresh our create widget. And there it goes, buff actor. Oh, I've chose the wrong buff. Hang on, let's fix that. Buff parent, there we go. Let's just refresh this. There we go, now we can plug it in. Okay, so that will now add it to the wrap box. We just now to tell our buff widget to change its appearance based upon what buff we are adding to the game. So to change the appearance and other things like that, we need to know more information about the buff we have in general. So we go to buff parent, and I'm actually going to go to the ability effect parent class. And that's yeah, probably behind it, there you go. And in here, we're going to add a couple of details, such as like an icon or thumbnail. So we're going to go thumbnail, and give that a texture 2D. And we're probably also going to have in here the name of it as a text and also a description of it as a text. Compile and save. Okay, now let's go back to the buff parent. And on the buff parent, we will now have those things we just added over here on the details panel in the class defaults. But your buff will also have other things in it too, such as like stacks and duration, things like that. So we'll do max stack size. And that'd be an integer. Default value for that would be just one. And then we'll have a duration as well, which should be a float. But we're going to change the default of that to negative one, which is null, which basically means it will just use its default setting, which is basically it won't die, it will just stay around. 
So with that in there, I'm going back to my buff widget. I can take out the buff actor. I can now get the information from the buff actor to apply to our widget here. So on the construct, we can drag out our icon, set texture, from, uh, te set brush from texture, buff actor, we can get the thumbnail and plug that in. We can also get things like the stack that we currently have, but we will do that another time. And then we've got the timer, which we can probably do now. We can go in here and get the uh, set percent. And the percentage goes from zero to one. And so what we do for the buff actor, we get the duration. So that's the fixed value of how long it's going to be alive for. And then we get the uh, lifespan. And that will get us how much life it has left. So if I do that, I can normalize that to a range. Put the duration as the range max and then put that in as a percentage. Okay. And remember, duration, if it's negative one, the range factor between zero and minus one, any lifespan is going to be higher than that. So it should output as one or be full bar. So we do that. Okay, so that's all done. Now to test this out, we need to actually spawn this in manually now. We can't just drag it in like we have done. So let's take the buff that we've got in our scene. Oh, sorry, it's gone. There you go. And then I'm going to go to my player couch just to do a little debug thing of testing it out. I'm just going to do button push to add it. So I don't think I've got the key being used. Nope. So we'll do... Uh, I'll do zero, my debug key. We'll just do spawn actor from class and choose our buff parent. Spawn transform, just that uh, can't transform. There you go. Uh, but more importantly, I need to know the intended target and owner of this. So intended target and owner are the same person. So it'd be self, both of those. Collision handling override, you're going to change to always spawn, ignore collisions. So you don't get any weird issues where it doesn't actually come in. So if we test it out now, and I'll deal damage, we've got 12, and then we've got ticking damage of 10 happening. And then if I hit the zero key, the buff now appears in the corner, and I can hit it, and I've now got 25 happening. The icon's not changing because I forgot to add it to the actual ability. So let's go to that. Buff parent. Class defaults, and there's a thumbnail I want to add to this. So let's go and add our thumbnail. We'll use the one we found earlier. Like that. And it's zero, and there's our buff. And it's now also increasing our damage. There you go, we now got our buffs appearing in the corner as we expect. Now we're not fully done yet, as I do want to go ahead and create a little tooltip to appear above the buff when we hover the mouse over it, telling us what the buff is actually doing to the player. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.